party. Did you notice the sunset? Well, now that's something, isn't it? And what does Mr. Sherlock Holmes think of it? I really couldn't say. We've never discussed it. I'll wager he knows all about it. Every little reason why him and all his drawings are now happy. Yes, I expect you're right. I wouldn't like that, would you, Daisy? I wouldn't want to know everything. I would ask how to twitch all, all the fun and noise all the Dr. Watson? Yes, madam? Go and get yourself a coat to put on. Madam? I have such trouble getting my boys to wear proper clothes in the cold weather. You would have brought a set of cold examples in the lower side, would you? No, madam. Thank you kindly, Dr. Watson. Don't mention it. What a nice young man, don't you think, Cecily? Yes, Daisy. Terribly obliging. Can't say as much for his friend Sherlock Holmes, though. Oh, no. Yeah, as much as I do. Too much as mine, I suppose. Oh, I wouldn't like that. Would you, Daisy? Oh, no, indeed. <laughs> I've got enough to worry about as this. Yes, and I say double dash to that. Yes, Mr. Holmes is a bit tardy, isn't he? A bit? Rather over an hour, Mrs. Hudson, well over. I expect his supper stone cold. As it should be. I'll take it down to the kitchen and warm it up. Don't bother. Don't bother at all. Yes, Mrs. Hudson, a very good bother to you. Um, as you well know, Mrs. Hudson, Holmes and I have tickets to the theater this evening. And if indeed, Holmes returns the next, let's say, five minutes, Tell a very little time if you need a suitable attire, let alone need a supper. You see? Yes, Dr. Watson, I see. And Mr. Holmes should not return in time? Mrs. Hudson? As my esteemed lodger, I will be entitled to one breakfast meal in the morning and one suitable supper at night. Such are the terms of our agreement, Doctor. As for you agree with Mr. Holmes, well, that's none of my concern. But that's it, Mrs. Hudson. It's opening night. The Imperial. Lily Lacey, Mrs. Hudson. The Prince himself will most certainly be there. Well, good for you. And Lily Lacey, and His Royal Highness, and all the other London society figures who will plot tonight's rise out of her edge. But I ask you, Doctor, am I to punish Mr. Holmes for a cold supper and count some silly play? <clears throat> no, sir. I'm afraid whatever ill you may now feel towards Mr. Holmes has nothing to do with me. On the contrary, Mrs. Hudson, it may have much to do with you. Holmes! I presume by your formal attire that you're indeed successful in securing tickets to tonight's gala performance. Congratulations. I hope you won't be disappointed. As for you, Mrs. Hudson, I suggest you get dressed. Pardon? Well, Doctor is a medium and escort. Me? Her? Holmes? Please do hurry. I'll get my cab waiting outside. But I don't know if I can. Overnight the Imperial and all? Why? Lily Lentry? Why? I have been to the theater ages. I'll look a fright. My cab is so out of fashion. Nonsense, dear lady. I look as charming as ever. Come, come, Mrs. Wilson. One of the virtues of theater is that the audience is in the dark, right? Shouldn't think anyone will notice. True, but... Please, Mrs. Hudson. That's a personal favor to me. Well, if you put it like that. Oh, why is the nature of this entertainment? It is a Christmas panto, the Sleeping Beauty. A panto? Why'd you say so in the first place? And we have ten minutes, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. What's in this scoundrel? You <laughs> mean, what have I done? For shame, you intended to eat my meal, hadn't you? Well, I... but... I'm trying to deny it. The evidence is plain. What evidence? The sauce, Watson. The sauce laid a little over this chili chop has been popped by the tines of the fork. And here, your, your fork, retired from duty, still boasts some droplets of the incriminating gravy. <laughs> Strange that you always clean your plate and utensils utterly. <laughs> Furthermore, from the position of the fork, it appears that it has been dropped. So our dear Mrs. Hudson caught you in the act, did she? <laughs> Come, Watson, confess. The evidence is blatantly apparent. All right, I'm sorry, aren't I? You were at home out of the set, and... Hold on! Why on earth am I apologizing to you? That's at home, the dear who the apologies. You disappeared this afternoon without so much as a word to Mrs. Hudson about your whereabouts. After I spent a considerable time and expense securing tickets to a play, you, yourself, said you were eager to see. Only to be told, not consulted by you, that I am to escort our own landladies to the most premier social event of the London season. You are displeased. My, you are a keen detective. <laughs> but that's just it, Watson. I cannot now or any other time apologize for my profession. It's not your profession that prompts me to protest. It's your blasted behavior. Ah, I stand corrected. I apologize. Good. That's all I wanted to hear. No more? No more. Watson, you disappoint me. What have I done now? For shame, you haven't asked me where I've been. Oh, no, Sherlock Holmes. Don't you dare tell me. 
Great soul, chap, I've happened upon an adventure. Without me? Wait, where? Matilda Briggs. A lady without me? What's it not a lady? Who then? Why don't you tell me? Oh, you've brought home some evidence. Look, smell, listen. Only then, perhaps, if you're deserving, you may touch. As though I were a schoolboy. But that's just it, Watson. Be a boy. Regard that carpet bag with all its innate novelty, with the wide eyes and the keen imagination of a child. Only then will you see without prejudice and discover the tale it has to tell. Come, Watson, what do you see? Oh, please, I'm hardly in the mood just now for parlor games. Parlor games, sir? After nearly three years as my colleague and bosom companion, I am to understand that you, Dr. John Watson, qualify the very foundations, nay, the soul of my art, my science, as possessing no greater import than an evening at charades? <laughs> No, Holmes, of course not. Forgive me. What about what's the really good time? The play. In five minutes, more than enough time. Very well. Look, smell, listen. That's right. Dash it, Holmes. My mind's a muddle. Shall I give you a clue? To get you going. How much obliged. That carpet bag? Yes. Is it mine? Well, I could have told you as much. I never thought it was yours. Not, and why not? Because I've never seen it before. It doesn't matter what you've seen before. You'd best prepare to see many a new thing and many a thing anew if you find the company on this adventure. Of course I'll come to you, if you'll have me. But why should I wonder? Heaven knows, I haven't the least fraction of your skill deduction. No, if you do. And never will. That remains to be seen. Now continue. <sighs> it's rather loose to wear just now. Strange, reminds me a bit of my army days in Afghanistan. Because the fabric, the dyes. Good. Though just a bit, I venture to say it's more of the dot origin. See that leaf pattern? Definitely Asian. That's about all. Besides the fact it appears to be quite soggy. And how soggy? Not rain nor snow today. The river. Matilda Burke is a ship, isn't she? From the Asian Pacific. The island of Sumatra, to be precise. You deduce that from a carpet bag? I know, but no, my dear Fred, I obtained that information from other sources. And I'm at a woeful disadvantage. I never said you were, you know, smell. <laughs> oh, my word, most unpleasant. Like what? I'd rather not say. Shall I say for you, then? Sewage, perhaps? Precisely. Take the two and make them out to one. The odor comes from within. You've got a living creature in there. I have. Well, oh, good heavens, man, release it. Oh, surely suffocate if it hasn't already. I'd rather doubt it. <coughs> Ah, see, proof positive is quite a lot. A rodent, unmistakably. Quite right. And aquatic species. Bravo, brilliant exercise, Watson. May I take a look now, Professor? You may. <laughs> not, not a woman at all of London, more lovely than ours is less than you agree, Watson. Oh, Mr. Holmes. And not a moment too soon. Your cab awaits, curtain at ten. Have a splendid time. There are the society. I'll keep the land burning. Goodbye. Come in, Wiggins. You brought the coffee. Coffee shop. I was having lunch. Delighted. Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. What brings you here on this fine evening? The fact that you're excited. Victoria Dots is foul this summer afternoon. Foul, you say? I do. Foul, what? Really? Don't play dumb with me, John Holmes. You know as well as I that the Matilda Briggs is the scene of some horrendous criminal action. I make it a statement not to jump to conclusions, Inspector. Crimes generally require evidence, and besides, I know nothing of the ship of which you speak. Now let's talk about something you do know. That is fine, is it not? Of course. Refusal to cooperate with the police is an offense as well. Some cases. Well, sir. Are you going to talk or not? What would you have me say? Fine, you're under arrest, Sherlock Holmes. Under what charge? Theft. Of what? That carpet bag. Oh, this I assure you, Inspector, I did not steal it. Constable Robertson says he did. Forgive the constable for the mistake. It was merely a boy who wilds carpet bags on the ship, not I. But still, possession of stolen goods, particularly when you know they are stolen, is undeniably a criminal offense. Offense? Offense, sir. I am offended at your insinuations and methods of interrogation. In the future, I should hope you make a thorough investigation of the circumstances before you go to make your next arrest. Morrison, Morrison, die. Attorneys for Sebastian Sons.
key brokers who had under their employ the ship of the Matilda Graves and as you can see by that letter, hired me as well. What for? I don't jump to conclusions. Be that as it may, I believe I still have to look at this carpet bag. Ah! You idiot! Look what you've done, I've been bitten! How was I supposed to know you had a dog in there? A dog? Size Miss Yorkshire Terrier. Ha! Scottish Terrier. Guess again. Guess nothing. Guess I'll have another look. No, Inspector, I tell you, it is a rat. Rat that bad? Rat that big impossible. Must rat me. Perhaps not, Inspector. Thanks to you, I have been bitten by the somewhat rare creature known as the Bryozomia Sumatrensis. Bryozomia Sumatrensis. What is Sumatrensis, sir? Commonly known by the common people. The giant rat of Sumatra. Well, I'm wet. I'm really dashed. Starting a performance over half an hour late, and then canceling it midway. Darn it, man! You can't use the car watch where you're going! Do you beg your pardon? I say, watch your tongue, my good man! Cow, indeed. Look, Pedro, you forgot. Long gone down to work, so. Watson, do get up. Sit in the gutter in such a fashion. There are laws against bankruptcy, doctor. For your information, Inspector, I was knocked down. Wicked old blind peddler. Do you wish to press charges? No, it was a simple misunderstanding. And see? Here you are his come up in. He forgot his wares. Fast now. Well, I'll be, Inspector. Treasure like I've never seen before. Quite right, Inspector. Not a treasure at all. Common quartz crystals. Why do you say these are? Crystals. Prisms for chandeliers and such. Prisms. To channel light. Refracting it. Bending it in spectrums of color. Making rainbows. Well, you can best be taking this down to the station. I will be wanting these, I'm sure. I do hope you meet later on, Inspector. Mr. Holmes? The Matilda Briggs are interviewing the captain. Quite right. And trust these bottles to the care of Mrs. Hudson. She'll undoubtedly be more than willing to take them down to the station tomorrow. My pleasure. Now, shall we hail a cab, Inspector? Holmes! Oh, Watson, do come along. Your medical observations will be the most illuminating. For you, Mrs. Hudson. Now, what's all this? An escort. Sir, okay. against the possibility of any further angry pedestrians. That's only a few doors down. Indulge me, Mrs. Hudson. Not for the gentlemen, are from the students. Wiggins, a word. You could just make a time inspector. Not ten minutes ago, the captain all of a sudden was parked in 